All right, so it's been a little while since I've had a look at a professional match of Terran versus Terran. So today it's time for another game of StarCraft 2. We're in the top left-hand corner of Berlingrad. Playing right here with the Red Terran SCVs, we have none other than Special. Special, of course, is from Mexico and his opponent. In the opposite corner with the Blue Terran pieces from South Korea, we are looking at Bjorn's main command center. All right, so Bjorn versus Special on Berlingrad. And Terran versus Terran definitely can be a little bit of a... Uh, a slower matchup. Let's leave it at that, okay? There's a lot of people out there that aren't necessarily the biggest fans of TVT, specifically because of the margin of error being incredibly small. You can imagine in the mirror matchups, right? Since, like, maybe in a, a Terran vs. Protoss or like a, a Zerg vs. Terran or a Zerg vs. Protoss, it's not as immediately obvious. But when both players in the mirror matchups are making the exact same units, if you end up with like, you know, 20 units and your opponent has 18, you will absolutely smash them. Right? It's not even remotely close. So oftentimes it can be decided very easily just by making one little mistake. Obviously though, Terran vs. Terran can be an absolute blast to watch. Just because, well, those siege tank wars and just the lines of attack that they usually go for. Especially in the middle stages of a game, it can be extremely exciting. This is the longest game that I've got of one versus one from, well, at least a... The one replay with the biggest file size from Wardy's most recent replay pack. So basically what I did is I, well, I filtered out a couple of 2v2s, which I may very well cover in the near future too. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so. But um, other than the two versus twos, this is, well, the, the replay file with the biggest file size. So generally speaking, that means we should be in for a pretty sick game. Anyhow, special, feeling ambitious, goes straight into the main base. Okay. <laughs> Throwing the grenades right over there on that little jump up pad. And Bjorn trying his very best. Oh my god, is the grass gonna save him? Whew, I think the grass just barely saved that Reaper. That's what I'm talking about though. One little mistake. You lose that Reaper. Bada bing, bada boom. You find yourself with less stuff. And then Bjorn obviously very good at micro can just punish you right away. Well, still gonna try. This is a little bit funky. So basically the tall grass. Good control right there for special. The tall grass that you see, those those side blockers, well, they're exactly that. Units that are hidden in the grass are not actually visible for the opponent until they actually enter. Obviously, the same can be said if you're like, you have a unit over here, you can't actually see through it. Not something that we see come into play all too often, but in TVT, especially in those Reaper battles, yeah, it definitely does ooh, come into the mix. Now, Special in the bottom left-hand corner is building his starport. There is a starport coming up as well for Bjorn. But he's building it inside of his main base. I know, boring. He's got the 111 coming up right over here, whereas special, he's got a 1 1 and then I guess 1 right over here in the bottom left. Special should have a slight upper hand here. Now, obviously, the units of his do need to travel across the map. So there's now one additional Hellion available right here for Bjorn. He needs to be so careful, special that is. Lighting up those units is definitely not ideal. He's diving very deep into the mineral line to try and deal as much damage as possible. Reaper, in the meantime, goes into the main base. Apparently, Special just satisfied right now with killing as many SCVs as he can, but so far, <laughs> that hasn't really been all too much. And I guess it's a bit of a wash, right? Both players taking some damage here. We've traded... Oh, we've traded out <laughs> our armies here in the earlier stages of the match. Not a big deal whatsoever, but Special, in the meantime, is building a fusion core in the bottom left-hand corner. The dog over here sniffing out whatever it can. This is special going for a battle cruiser cheese against Bjorn. So he's going for a proxy battle cruiser against Micro Jackson himself. Now so far honestly, special's micro has been just fine, right? Definitely up to par right here with special or sorry, with Bjorn's. So I don't think he needs to be too concerned, but going for the battle cruisers definitely is a very significant investment right from the get-go. You can see it right there for quite a while. Okay, good micro against that widow mine. For quite a while there, Special was down in supply, but now that the Battle Cruiser is building, he's going to be able to catch up ever so slightly. So Battle Cruisers, I know I say this every time, but they are 400 minerals, 300 gas. The reason why I bring that up is because they're so expensive, and it can be quite tricky to be able to produce them. You really can't afford much when you're going for Battle Cruisers. I mean, you can kind of sneak out some additional units too, but Battle Cruisers and SCVs, and then... I guess every single battle cruiser also requires its own supply depot just because they're so heavy in the supply count. You need to, yeah, not make sure you, you know, spend too much of your efforts into just making battle cruisers because they are pretty good, but they're not that amazing. Anyhow, apparently the way in which special plans on defending here at home is with that improvement right there to the cyclone. So there's already a couple of cyclones once again, pretending that they're Pokemon. 
Well, Bjorn. He's not going to be able to get the first lock on. Ah, okay. Lock on right there goes on the Hellion in the front. So that was actually quite nice right there for Bjorn, all things considered. Both players just trying to trade out whatever they can. Oh, God. That was so close. Almost an absolute disaster. Bjorn, in the meantime, though, sending that medevac into the main base of the opponent. And of course, the battle cruiser, even though it takes a very long time, it is done at this point. Raven also patrolling back and forth, ready to, like, intercept any sort of uh, flying unit. Yeah, this is not quite ideal. Immediately, we see the switcheroo here, so we can start producing some Vikings. Okay, double cyclone available. Beyond keeping those Marines alive, and he's going to be able to get the medevac on out of there for now as well. Special target firing down at the very first Raven of the opponent. Second Raven is also going to come out. No more point defense, uh, point defense drone for those bad boys. So... Actually taking quite a bit of damage right there on the BC. Another battle cruiser, by the way, was produced as well. More SCVs have gone down on the other side of the map, and both players end up taking quite a bit of damage. Now, obviously, if you can keep the battle cruisers alive, they are very good to have in the later stages of the game. Uh, don't lose it, though. All right, I was going to say, that lock-on could be an absolute disaster. BC goes home. He's going to be able to repair that with the SCVs as soon as he realizes that it's back home. There we go. They're going to be able to touch it back up to full HP, and that will make things a little bit better. In the meantime, okay, nice snipe right there on the Siege Tank 2. Does come at the cost right there of a Cyclone, but Special also dealing some damage right there at the front. Trading a Cyclone for a Siege Tank is yeah, definitely a good trade. Something that you're looking for at this stage in the game. Special though, making multiple BCs. Okay, it's not just going to be one or two. He's now building a third. Problem, obviously, is that at some point your opponent is going to have enough Vikings out. There's two more Vikings popping out of the starport at the perfect moment. Well, maybe not the perfect moment. Bjorn probably would have liked to have them a couple seconds earlier there, but... In the end, the battle cruisers will be the knight. So, the main problem with battle cruisers, right, is that they... They are very strong, and they have a lot of health, and they deal a lot of damage and all that, right? The problem is, though, that at some point, there's going to be so much anti-air available that if you don't pay attention, just a couple marines with Stimpak can gun it down very, very quickly. So, you need to make sure you have enough units on the back of it, too, to be able to support it. Because otherwise, if you just go full battlecruiser, literally just marine viking, or just pure marine, or just pure viking, can get rid of it. Like that a lot. Okay, so Bjorn using the interference matrix right there from the Raven. Luckily for Special, he teleported back home just barely in time because he would have been in a little bit of trouble otherwise. Both of them stay alive for the time being, but it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a high risk build that doesn't really have a very high reward most of the time, if that makes any sense, right? It's, it's high risk, low reward, which I guess is the exact opposite of what you're normally looking for in a game of StarCraft 2. I mean, I say that... Assuming the opponents are actually very high level too, Bjorn knows how to deal with these sort of things. There's plenty of people out there that, you know, will not be able to so comfortably control against that sort of army. Anyways, triple battle cruiser. Are we going to make another one? He did go for the Yamato Cannon Research too inside of the Fusion Core. Keep in mind, Bjorn still hasn't found the starport, right? So he probably realizes that it's somewhere on the left side of the map, but... Anyways, a little bit of double pronged battle cruiser harassment. One BC, probably gonna Yamato gun down or whatever it can. The other BC is right over here on the right side, trying to create a, a distraction. Gotta teleport out of there. Okay, good. Before the interference matrix comes in, this is the classic one two punch right here from Special. Trying to do as much damage as possible. And you know what? Even though this is one of the oldest tricks in the StarCraft book, apparently it worked out. Oh, what? Oh, no, I think that was a misclick. Oh, that sucks. I think he probably assumed that... I'm gonna go back here for a second. What just happened? Oh, tactical jump was still on cooldown, that's why. So I think he selects both of the battle cruisers here. Yeah, so he tries to jump them both back home. But sadly, this one, it didn't have the cooldown available yet. So Special ends up losing the BC. And with that, most of the harassment potential, I would say. I mean, he can continue fighting if he really wants to. He's making another battle cruiser, so maybe he disagrees with me, but... Ah, that sucks. Losing a battle cruiser like that really is something that you want to avoid at all costs. You can kind of lose everything else but the battle cruisers. Even then, though, you can see that the minerals and gas lost right here is a little bit bigger here for Bjorn, so... Not the end of the world. But ultimately, I do think that Bjorn's unit composition is going to be quite a bit better, so... It's going to be a mech transition here from Special. He's gone for double armory. He's now adding on additional factories. That's going to be five factories in total. 
Beyond scouts the additional production as well in the bottom left-hand corner, so he now knows that there's gonna be more production coming out of that starport. Probably another battle cruiser that he has to worry about. Bjorn, however, is going for his bread and butter, where he's focusing on just as many of those biological units as he can. So we have a complete clash of styles here. This is what I like about TVT. Terran Bio and Terran Mech, they are, for all intents and purposes, two entirely opposite playstyles. So even though, you know, it's obviously both Terran, plays very, very differently. So it's Bio Terran versus Mech Terran. Let's see how this plays out. We need to get out of there. Okay, a couple of units get killed. That's good. Cyclones, by the way, were hovering on the left side of the map to make sure that any Vikings could be intercepted if the other Battlecruiser uh, would get hit as well. The triple BC available at this point. Bjorn's army is slowly building, right? It's slowly getting more powerful. But since he's so busy putting out fires at home, Special's army count is also growing quite a bit. This map obviously allows you to defend relatively easily. So, especially with a planetary over here, some missile turrets at the front, some siege tanks in the back. You don't really need that much in order to actually stop marine-based pushes. It's gonna be an orbital command right here from Bjorn on the right side of the map, so... His fourth base is gonna be relatively exposed. A couple of Hellions here are once again being a nuisance. Group of Marines in the bottom left-hand corner are gonna get rid of this starport shenanigans, but I think he doesn't really care too much about more starport. No, he goes for factory number six and factory number seven. So to clarify, the way that Bjorn is playing is considered to be the standard in this matchup. Bio tank with Viking and then also Raven support. Very common, it's what we see all of the time, especially Marine tank. This is relatively Marauder heavy. Whereas what Special is going for here, Definitely not what we see in a conventional game of, uh, of Terran vs. Terran, although maybe that's why the battle cruisers were there as well, right? To be fair, oh, yeah, yeah. to be fair, going for a micro war against someone like Bjorn himself is incredibly hard. Bjorn, though, does get into a really good position, and that's exactly what you're looking for, right? You're trying to abuse that mobility of the, uh, the bio army to try and, yeah, outpace the guy who's going mostly for that slower mechanical based force. At the same time, though, the Battle Cruisers are getting quite a bit of damage in. They do need to teleport home. They don't really know exactly where the Ravens are, but the BCs are going to join up with the main force. Orbital Command did fly. The Hellions there at the back of the fourth base ended up killing a, a very significant amount of SCVs as well, and special holds. That was the first big fight right there in the game, or at the very least, the first big move out from Bjorn. And honestly, yeah, a couple workers were killed, maybe a siege tank or two, but... Special made the commitment right there to defend the high ground instead, to deal counter-attack damage instead, and then it turned out to be just okay. So Blue Flame is also not an upgrade we see very often in this matchup. Mostly, like, um, I know that sounds a little bit backwards, because if there's one unit that's really good against Mass Marine, it would be, like, for example, Hellions, right? So Blue Flame makes a lot of sense. The thing is, Blue... F oh my god, he's going... Oh no, that's Bjorn! Thought for a second we had a second Fusion Core from Special. Anyways, the reason why we normally don't see that is because the only reason why you go for Hellions and Hellbats... Oh god, that's a lot of siege tanks, by the way. Yeah, those those Hellbats are in a weird spot. Um, it's because you only really use them as a, a mineral dump. So you basically go for, like, your really strong units, spending your gas on all of that, right? And then if you're gonna spend gas on an Infernal Pre-Igniter, so the Blue Flame upgrade, it's usually not ideal. Apparently that was special, liking it in this particular case. I mean, it's not that expensive an upgrade either. Okay, so what Bjorn is trying to get done right now is he's trying to go for an air superiority, right? So there we go. We've got that starport trend or that starport explosion. So he's trading out biological units right now or units that he loses uh, for like, you know, higher tier units instead. So this upgrade right over here is called Advanced Ballistics. It gives plus two ranged. I think it's plus two. Ooh, to every single one of the Liberators. And the idea is as soon as Bjorn has control of the air, which at this point he definitely has, despite the battle cruisers here of his opponent. He's gonna start going, yeah, for mass, mass Liberator. And Liberators absolutely destroy siege tanks and slower moving units that are on the ground. So... This is gonna be almost like a surprise. Bjorn is probably gonna try and suddenly show up with those units, siege on top of his opponent's army and get some work done. Hellion over here, though? Oh my god, it's so close to accidentally scouting this. Yeah, not seeing it just yet. I mean, it is a pretty expected transition, so... Now there's four starports here on the production tab as well for Special, who's getting his 3-3 upgrades for the mechanical units as well. Bjorn is doing an excellent job here. 
He's going 3-3 upgrades, despite the fact that he's switching away from biological units for the most part. Okay, this is when the lips show up. This is what I'm talking about, right? So, siege tanks kind of derping, they unseach, they're a little bit slow. Marines now also coming in from the side, Marauders coming in from the front. Vikings are here too to clean up any battle cruisers that feel ambitious. In order to deal with the Vikings and the Liberators for now, it's gonna be Thor's here from special, but yeah, he's... Well, oh my god, he's making five more. I think he may very well decide to go for a transition here in a little bit too. Because in just a moment's notice, he's gonna be able to pump out like ten of those Vikings at once. Alright. Yeah, TVT can be such an amazing matchup. It's a it's a matchup that can over like it can be over at like the three minute mark because someone missed micro, and that's where like a lot of the games end, right? Which is why a lot of people, at least that play on the ladder, aren't necessarily the biggest fan of it. You make you, you can make one little mistake, and obviously Terrence, they can essentially make any unit they like within like you know three minutes of the game starting. Okay, maybe five minutes of the game starting, and it's really easy to accidentally lose because of that when well both players are doing that. But it's got so much potential. That's one of the nice things when I cast games on YouTube instead of casting games in life, right? I get to, like, well, pick and choose what I want to cover. There's a lot of replays out there that are, like, 30 kilobytes big. Okay, maybe 50 kilobytes big. A lot of those will be Terran versus Terrans. I'm just, you know, I don't usually watch the games, right? Like, I don't know what's coming. I usually haven't seen the games, but, uh... Yeah, at least in my experience, a big file size equals epic game. So far that, uh... That seems the whole truth. Alright. So now Bjorn is the guy playing full air, though. So these upgrades of his are actually rather late. The flying units here from Special are going to be significantly better upgraded, at the very least as far as their armor goes. Okay. Still a pretty significant biological army. Yeah, those Yamato guns getting rid of a couple of those uh, Liberators as well. A couple of randomly <laughs> positioned missile turrets on the right side of the map. Special was just starting to set up shop in that location. Gun right now shows up once again. Is there technical jump available? There is not, so one BC falls. Second BC in a lot of trouble too. At the same time though, the Thors are working on his army. And keep in mind, there is a potential here for Special to transition towards a ton of those Vikings at a moment's notice. Aww. Step Thor is stuck. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> But he is. He needs a medevac to get him out of there. There's a fight going on in the middle of the map. Would someone please help him? Honestly, a big deal. These units are expensive. You don't want to get them stuck inside of your main base. Protoss players have got a lot of experience, you know, getting stuck. So they usually are a little bit more diligent with their positioning. Especially just kind of, you know, putting stuff wherever you can. He probably hasn't looked back at his main base, by the way, in a while. They obviously are producing using hotkeys, so you may not realize that some of those units are stuck. Anyhow, Battle Cruiser. Okay, gets killed in the bottom left-hand corner as well. Special, though, is making a move right over here. To watch the right side of the map. Okay, Bjorn recognizes that that army is likely not going to be killed by the biological units, or not at the very least without a flank. Great scan right there for Special. Reveals that that medevac group is moving out. That's about 50 army supply right here from Bjorn. So a very, very significant, uh, yeah, commitment right here from the South Korean Terran. That Thor! Oh my god! This is the smartest play ever! Maybe he was stuck on purpose! What a legend! Seen that in a video one. No, no, no. <laughs> At the same time, Bjorn making a bit of a move, but he decides to go back. I think that these bio army, or this bio army here in the top left and corner, it's basically toast. Right? The Thors... Oh my god, this is awkward, though. They're derping into the main base. Honestly, if there was ever an opportunity for Bjorn to go for double prong harassment, right now is the time, because these units take, like, another 30 seconds to go back into a, a useful position. Yeah, I would have loved to see this army moving it over literally anywhere else, because I think that was a free picking right there from Bjorn. He did trade out armies reasonably well. So you can see here, yeah, resource lost-wise, it's what we'd expect. Actually, a little bit better from Bjorn than we'd really expect. Oh my god. Landed Vikings, of course. So just to clarify, this is not the guy playing mass, you know, Sky Terran in the early game. <laughs> Special was the, uh, the one opening up with Sky Terran, and now it's Bjorn. Going for mass, mass harassment in the bottom left-hand corner with Vikings. That's kind of like the... 
the way, I guess, StarCraft II developers in 2010 and, I guess, before that had them envisioned, right? We don't normally see Vikings being used like this, but it's pretty good. Alright, here's the problem, though. Special's main army is moving through the center of the map. But honestly, I'm looking right now at the supply count. Yeah, things are looking pretty hot as far as that goes for Bjorn. But where is his army? Is this it? Is that it? If Special sieges up on this high ground, Bjorn is basically toast. Well, those tanks are sieging up as well. There's the Adara missile. Army absolutely gets demolished. At the same time, though, Special dealing some damage over here as well. Getting some work done. The Vikings have returned back home, but because Special never really committed to a mass sky terran of his own, at this point those Vikings are in a bit of an awkward spot. I mean, yeah, sure. He can kill any battle cruiser, sure, he can kill any raven, but Bjorn ha or Special has none of those units. I mean, he's got one raven up over here without energy. But for the most part, it means that Liberators, I think, are gonna be the go-to option. Oh my god, so much damage is being done right here by the Mexican Terran. Fantastic gameplay here, honestly. He's now up in supply versus the Bio Terran, which is not where Bjorn wants to be. These Vikings have taken the slowest route ever, but eventually they've made their way towards the 12 o'clock position. The problem is, I don't know if that's where they really need to be, yeah. Uh, Bjorn thinking about going for like a full-on counterattack instead. Thors and Siege Tanks happily outranging whatever they can, so that Planetary is not particularly useful either. Look at the amount of workers killed over the last couple of seconds. 60 plus SCVs end up going down here. No Medivex, no SCVs to repair this either. As a matter of fact, there's only a handful of SCVs remaining right now for our Terran player in the blue. Only 21 of them, which really isn't that much. Desperately trying to make some new ones. Luckily for him though, he does have a lot of command centers. Plus he did deny that base in the bottom left, right? So it's not like Special has a huge bank either. Bjorn is going to need a moment to remax, but he's pumping out 11 marines at once. He still has a bit of a mineral bank, so with one good engagement, he can still turn the tide of battle. If he can get like one moment where this bio army is, or this, sorry, this mech army is not sieged up, if he jumps on top of those siege tanks before they can siege up, Bjorn still wins this game. Special needs to make sure he does not get overzealous here. Very eager to get this game over with, but... Yep, that's it. Nicely done. Those Liberators preventing this entire area from being accessed by the Terran and Rit. Still, though, more and more Hellion harassment. We're now talking 108, 109, really. Corvid Reactor coming up from Special. That is him transitioning towards, well, if he can. Okay, there's another on the armor missile as well. This is the moment though where Special is going to get overwhelmed by at least some of those blue biological units. That's exactly what I was talking about. A couple of siege tanks right there, not part of the army. A few of them still sieged up in the middle of the map too. They are gonna get picked off for free, it seems. Good sieging right there on those libs. They're gonna be able to, uh, yeah, get rid of those tanks on the retreat. And Special has to move back. He's making an army here. He wants to go into Ravens. That's why he would go for the Corvid Reactor upgrade. It's basically a Raven energy improvement, which is nice and all. Bjorn is mining the entire right side of the map. Base in the top right, I believe, is still completely untouched. So a lot of minerals to be acquired over there. Bjorn right now using that mobility of his to his advantage. He gets to the other side of the map about as fast as Special does. Orbital Command get blown up in just a couple secs. Is there enough right here as well, though, for Bjorn to actually kill the Planetary? Does he want to commit that far? At the same time, Special is absolutely relentless with the Hellion run dice. Maybe we should be seeing Blue Flame a little bit more frequently, huh? Seems to be quite good. Anyways, Planetary over at the 12 o'clock position was destroyed. No Planetaries here for Bjorn. So that, I guess, is the main reason why those Hellions are so incredibly effective. Normally, these outer bases will have Planetaries on them, but Bjorn may be getting a little bit greedy. Maybe thinking, okay, if you're going to be playing mech, I don't need them. Turns out maybe it was the right choice to make some Planetaries after all. All right. So things have stabilized. 24 and a half minutes into this game, supply count dead even. If that is the case, though, I still think I like Special's position a little bit better. Just because in a straight-up battle, he should win. Thing is, Bjorn is not likely to give him a straight-up battle, and at this point, Bjorn has a lot of scans available. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Yeah, now every time those siege tanks fire, that's like 10 supply down the drain at the bare minimum. 
Ravens here in the mix are also fantastic, by the way. Special with a couple of anti-armor missiles can really soften up this blue army very easily. So he doesn't need too many. Just a couple anti-armor missiles can change this fight very rapidly, or at the very least, it's gonna force Bion to disengage. A couple of Cyclones over here being a nuisance as well. Special still pumping out four of those units at once. Okay, anti-armor missile being used right there on all of those flyers here from Bion. Bion ends up taking a lot of damage on them, yeah. So basically it reduces their armor temporarily, meaning that units that are fighting against them deal more damage until, well, that red or that orangey paint is gone. Special just got rid of his opponent's flyers. Which opens up the opportunity for him to make more and more of those Ravens. There's a lot of siege tanks somewhere though, okay, I was gonna say. Special needs to be careful. He's a little split up right now. Bio Army is running dangerously low on health. There are siege tanks on the high ground too. I think Special should give up this position over here. Yeah, just use new tanks over here as a reinforcing instead. Okay, there we go. Siege those up too. Beyond sees that he's caught between a rock and a hard place. And just like that. It's gotta be Special, who obtains the victory in this awesome game of Terran versus Terran. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you very much.